Hello everybody. It has been forever. It's been over a week and I have not done any painting. I've been moving to my new studio classroom and I am officially in it, I am happy to say. So, I, um, I'm doing my first pour today and I'm super excited about it and uh, I've got lots of space to work which is kind of cool so I'm just like really happy I'm happy to be back in my zone and it kind of feels different not doing it in my house but it's gonna be fun anyway um, I've got a 16 by 20 canvas and it's on top of some butcher paper that was used and a puppy tray liner those are uh, it's on my Amazon link and you use them in the bottom of a kennel for puppies and so it's plastic and it's just an option for something for you to uh, set on your table or whatever if you need that so you know that you can protect your table and that kind of thing I've got an actual board that's coming this afternoon my husband's going to put a board on top of my table and give me some more width so this is uh, just temporary for today but um, so yeah I'm going to do a pour and I can't wait I think I'm going to do a swipe and I was thinking about whether I wanted to um, base coat it or not but I think I think I'll skim coat it and I'm going to do something swiped or florally because that's just what I'm in the mood for. It's been so long since I've painted and I just want to do something that I really, really enjoy. So I'm pulling out my tools here. I'm going to have my straw and my skewer. Of course, everything today is mixed one to one Oetrol to paint. Oetrol Easy Flow, it's European. It's the same thing as Floetrol. I just use Oetrol to, um, they give me the product to demo for you and I actually really love the quality of it. But it's just like Floetrol. And I am trying to dig out my, my little trusty, my favorite little um, palette knife my old Ollie's store card that just feels this feels good and comfortable to me so I've got that and um, I'm using deco art paints so typically the deco art paints are going to be the Americana that I use and so um, true ochre this would say you know true ochre deco art so everything in the paint in the bottles squeeze bottles is deco arts this would be primary yellow orange flame true red this is the uh, primary magenta which is premium so that add, you have to add a little bit of water to that one if it's in a tube you need to add some water to make it um, to the right consistency bright blue ultra blue deep these are my go-to colors always festive green sour apple This is a color I mix between Evergreen and Ultra Blue Deep and um, so it's kind of like a peacock color, maybe like a phthalo greenish, darker green that one is. Desert Turquoise. Um, sweet Mint. And of course I have my titanium white. And the black, lamp black. So I'm just saying I'm not even organized yet. 
as far as my flow goes here since this is my first pour that I've done here in my new space. So just bear with me here for a minute. Get my ducks in a row. I've got my trusty spatulas too and I also just picked up another little set at the dollar store and these you know are different sizes so it's always good to have kind of an assortment of different sizes to use. And, you know, as usual with any canvas, I put push pins on the back side in the corners and that keeps it raised off of the surface. So that is there. So I'm going to start with a layer of white, the titanium white. And I don't want much. I have learned with swiping on top of it, if you want to do swipes on top that and I've got this this easy glide Wilton icing fondant spreader you just want a very light skim coat you don't want a really thick layer because when you put it on really thick what happens is your colors that you put on will spread out and they won't keep the shape that you're intending it to be as well so if you don't want those cells to really, really, you know, spread out and go kind of haywire, then just put a light skim coat on your canvas. I do make sure that I kind of take it over the edges. So, and there, you know, people have mentioned too that this tool sometimes there's a suction. So if you if you go very gently, you have less chances of having that suction happen to it, where it doesn't want to lift off your canvas. It kind of wants to stick to it. So just keep a very light touch, and that's true with the whole process when you're swiping is a light touch anyway. Okay. Make sure I'm in frame here. So like I said, I want to do something floral. I think I want it to be a little bit tropical feeling, even though it's almost, you know, it's, De it's almost December and almost Christmas time. I want it kind of, I think I want it kind of abstract and bold and colorful just for the heck of it. I'm just in the mood to do something like that today, just to be a little bit on the creative side. So, let me think here. I think I will go with... some red. A little bit of that magenta color. yellow. So I'm going to see if I can do this with my palette knife. So that turned out okay. I'm doing a very, very light touch. And I'm kind of doing half of it first, and then half of it. And then I'm twisting my palette knife to get that pointed effect. And I'm 
Okay. So my other suggestion too is if you're going to do uh, multiples of the same kind of thing to go ahead and do them you know while you just did it so you don't forget the order you painted or whatever so I'm going to um, But I'm only doing one flower at a time, I, even though I might be doing multiple flowers, I'm just doing one at a time because the paint will spread out if you just leave it laying there. And so you just want to take one flower at a time. And I just dripped, so just lift it off with your fingertip. So red, magenta, orange. and yellow. And these are not real flowers, they're just imaginary. Very light touch. And I'll scoot it even with my palette knife. If I need to shift it a little bit, I'll just scoot it over. And I'm, you know, when I finish a flower, I wipe off my palette knife as well. Knocking stuff over. So I gotta drag my little petal out again because it landed in the corner of it. I left a little bit bigger gap there in the middle so I can even just pull that paint in just a little bit if I want to. So I'm, I'm kind of picturing this flower being multicolored so I think I want to add the purple tones so I've got my dioxazine purple and my purple rain I think what I'm going to do is do a little bit of that purple rain between the petals. And I'm going to go ahead and do all these at one time pretty much. So it's okay if the, if the paint spreads out a little bit, you know, in between while the time passes. That's okay. 
And the dots the same purple. I don't want a lot of it. I just want just a hint to go deeper. So as I swipe out, it'll that darkness will kind of pop through just a little bit. And then maybe even some bright blue just for fun. Because I love purple and red, orange and blue together. For some reason, those colors just make me really happy. I dripped in the middle of that petal, so just stick my fingertip in and take it out. Now, I'm going to see if I can blow. I just wanted to see the effect that it would make. So I'm going to do one that way and then one with my palette knife to see. So I like that one better. So I'm going to just use my finger and pull this one in a little bit. Wiping my palette knife off. And I'm going to put a little bit of white back where I totally took it down. Whoops. I had a plug in my white so it came out in a rush. it this way. Kind of like it's spread out. Now I'm just bringing that purple blue color back towards the center of the flower. I want this to be very kind of whimsical feeling too. So I think I'm going to use my 
Okay, I'm going to go with my lighter green. And this time I'm going to do kind of like a big dash. Do a little yellow. I'm just going to see if I like this order. The festive green and then the deeper green. And I'm going to use my card on this one, I think. And you kind of flip your wrist. So now I'm going to try one where it's darker. To lighter. And see, so you can you can kind of switch them up. Some can be lighter to darker, and some can be darker to lighter. If you want it to be, it can be anything you want it to be. And I always wipe your card off after you've swiped, so that you don't contaminate that color with whatever you swiped with before. So then it comes dark to light, which is really pretty too. So you can switch some up and do some one way and some the other. So what I'll do is I'll just um, do some this way first and then some the other way. This table is a um, an eight foot table, you know, that you get like from Sam's Club or whatever, and it is lower than my dining room table was at my house. So I'm actually sitting on a nice, comfy rolling stool. So I'm actually sitting down, but you know, when you're sitting down, you get a little bit different perspective. And as far as working, you know, with your control. When you're sitting, you have a little different kind of perspective. So just keep that in mind as well. I may have to uh, raise the table up on some blocks. Give it a little lift. And you can kind of squiggle your leaves too a little bit. Which is, you know, just gives it more of an effect, you know. So wipe in the card. So it gives it that wiggly kind of feel. And you use your you can kind of use the edge of your card to fill in areas in the gaps of the flower or whatever. And so now Okay, I'm going to start with yellow this time instead of the light green. So I'll go in the opposite, exact reverse. Start with the yellow. And even if it's just a small leaf, you know, you might have areas that might just have a small leaf, but the sour apple. plug in there so it kind of got stopped up. And I also kind of, I kind of narrowed it down a little bit so that it's not just straight. If that makes sense, I'm trying to make it more narrow because the, the leaf is going to get pointed.
that has a totally different perspective with the yellow coming out as well. Like I said, you can kind of use your card to kind of almost draw in the shape a little bit. Drag it and draw it in. Okay, so now I want to add some more, like here. Stick my fingers in there. Like here, it looks like it's missing something. So, this is where I'll just do a dot in these gaps where I feel like it's just missing a little something. And then I'm going to use my palette knife instead of the card and go smaller with my swipe. And I tell you what, instead of using yellow this time, I'm going to use I'll use the, the light turquoise, the sweet mint. And this may have actually, I may have added another turquoise that was left over to this because it looks a little deeper than sweet mint, but it's close. And then I just take my palette knife. So it just gives a little bit different tone by adding that little bit of turquoise into it. like that. So now I want to do something with the negative space and trying to figure out my camera is definitely moving on me. <laughs> I'm, so I'm continually dragging my tray further off the table. That's hilarious. So I want to do something around here just to add some color into the white area and give it some interest. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of do a squiggle. And you can kind of hear me, I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm kind of dragging the tip of my bottle on the canvas, but you don't, I mean, you don't have to do that. So I'm just adding that color in. And then I'm going to do some of the pale mint. And I'm not, I'm not trying to go over the same areas. I'm just adding it in addition to, you know, in that rough area. Because I'm going to end up swiping this as well. And now I want a little bit of this Ultra Blue Deep. I have no idea what this is going to turn out like, but Just 
Well, I'm just plain. I just wanted to paint today because I have missed it so badly. And now that I'm moved into my studio, I can get back into the routine. Um, I still have my grand opening to tackle, which is Saturday. And I think I'm just throw in an accent or two of purple. And this just may end up being a swiped background effect. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to tackle this yet, but I want to color. Okay. So let me just figure out, do I want to use my card? Do I want to use a plastic scraper? I'm basically just blending the colors in. Almost up to the edge, but not quite. So the white is very, very thin. So I'm just trying to be aware of where my leaf shapes are and flowers and that kind of thing. I don't, want, I don't want the green mixed in really. So this is just my background really. And there's some areas that I'm not going to be able to get the scraper in that I'll just go back in with my palette knife and use my palette knife there. basically giving it a blue background but very painterly feeling so the cells are popping up just a little bit which is what I want Wipe that off and I use my little palette knife for just these little middle areas that are really small. y'all might be saying she ruined it she ruined it there's still more I'm still doing more now I want to go all against this with black kind of like an outline kind of painterly, nothing, you know, set in stone. It's very quiet here in my studio. It's in a downtown area. It's an old, old building that was a Rose's store and it's been converted into a little mall area inside and there's about seven or eight shops and there's a big comic book store at the end of the hallway and so they have a little bit of traffic but the other places really don't, I haven't seen much of anything so it's very quiet it's way quieter than at my house because at my house I have um, central heating and air and so when it kicks on, it gets really loud. 
and here I have baseboard heating so you can kind of hear the clicking of the baseboard heat but other than that it's like super quiet which I kind of like I was playing my music earlier and I don't play my music when I do my videos because of all the copyright infringements and things like that and I don't want to deal with all that so I was you know while I was cleaning and setting up my studio and everything I was playing my music and really enjoying it and so now it's nice and quiet so I kind of like the quiet it's good to have quiet every once in a while you're probably saying well why don't you be quiet <laughs> So this is like really kind of abstract looking. It's not like typical swiping kind of canvas. So don't be disappointed. It's just playing and just having fun. That is what art is all about. Is It's therapeutic. It's good for you. It literally is good for you. It's proven to be good for you. I did a little article like a blog for veterans um, but it, it applies to anybody that um, art therapy besides music and everything else is so good for you it reduces your blood pressure it lowers your cortisol and I shot out a bunch of black there so I'm just trying to lift off what I accidentally did there by pushing too much paint out so I gotta stick a little put a little turquoise and a little blue mint color in here. But anyway, it helps art helps with um a sense of community and feeling like you belong in a community especially artists because artists have a tendency to be introverts and they have a tendency to isolate themselves and it is proven to be so much better for you to be in an environment where you're with people you know you don't have to be by yourself all the time so and even you know like this with YouTube I'm by myself but it's like I'm teaching a class to people because you're listening to me so it's kind of like I've got a class scenario even though there's really nobody in here but me but I'm still showing you and teaching you something so it's just really good for you art is really good for you it's very therapeutic it's been that way for me for years it's kept me sane. It's got me through a tough marriage that ended in divorce. It got me through raising teenage boys and one of them being a drug addict. And him still not, at 30 years old, he's still not where he needs to be. And so with my faith and my art, I've managed to stay sane, but it's, it's a very difficult experience to go through with your children or, you know, with a loved one of any sort that you love and you don't want to see them destroy themselves and or make poor choices. And so um, if I didn't have my art at times, I don't think I would have made it. It literally has been my saving grace. So now I think I'm just going to do some swirls because I want this to feel very whimsical and fun. And the black is kind of the accent to the whole thing. So I'm barely squeezing my bottle and I've got, you know, the bottles that have the narrow nozzles, the ones that I love so much. Um, so I'm barely squeezing it. So if I were really squeezing this, there would be way more paint coming out than there is. And if you have 
the cheaper bottles that come from the dollar store that are you know that have the little snap-on lids those things really put the paint out so I highly recommend you looking into getting these bottles investing in at least a set of eight they come in a pack of eight and they're about thirteen dollars or so on Amazon and they have a screw on lid so when you're finished you just screw the lid on it's nice and tight doesn't leak these bottles don't leak out the edges like the other cheap bottles are known to do so it, they're just fantastic I really really love them so I'm just going to take my design and make it continue as if it were going off the canvas too but I'm not painting the sides of this one I'm going to leave it and I may end up painting my sides black later on I'm not sure but um, I like to just go ahead and take when I'm doing something like this that there's kind of like a pattern I like to kind of take it to the edge just to make it feel kind of complete so like these black dots are sinking and that's okay I'm just going to go back over them just a little bit and then I'm going to go over them again with a white dot just for a highlight one thing too in this building the, you know the, the studio gets cool in the evening because I turn the temperature down a little bit so it might get you know a little bit lower in temperature than it might get at my house and so my paints are a little cooler so they seem a little bit more fluid so that's just something to keep in mind is you know your temperature change can affect the outcome of your painting and the fluidity of your paint I'm putting like little white dots on top of the black and they'll sink down too but it's almost like it gives it a highlight Okay. So I'm going to pull this up to you. So this is very abstract and non-realistic. Kind of stained glass looking a little bit but not much but there it is so I am so happy to be back in the painting game you just don't know how happy I am and I appreciate you being patient with me and there will be so many more videos coming your way and I'll get back on a regular schedule and try to get one to you pretty much every day of the week Sometimes I can't do it every day, but, you know, for the most part, I will be. So I hope you had a great Thanksgiving holiday. And um, December is going to be busy for a lot of people with family and vacation and holiday time and all that. So keep on painting. Enjoy the holidays. Enjoy your family and friends. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.